Hi everyone. Happy to be back for the third episode of my mulling over series. I'm Purnima Jaydev. Welcome back. Again, thanks to those who listened to the previous episode and especially those who gave some good feedback. It does not really matter if the feedback is positive or negative. A good feedback is really some feedback, any feedback. We all need feedback. A constructive feedback is something to always look forward to. Speaking of which, my maternal aunt who's retired from her government service for about 15 or so years called me up to say that she could relate to what I talked about women empowerment and actually all of the points I mentioned held good in her times as well which is like very 5 to 30 years back. Thanks for this feedback Usha Prahlad. Makes you wonder, right, if we need to rethink on how we qualify a society as being progressive. Having latest technology gadgets to forward jokes or gossip is definitely not what qualifies a society as progressive. Another important feedback I got was on the duration of the podcast. This feedback was from my husband Shiv. He said 30 minutes podcast is too long and should be for about 22 to 15 to 20 minutes coming from a man who has had to hear me out for the last 24 years i was skeptical about this feedback but i did do research on this and found that 22 minutes is maximum recommended duration for podcasts and best is about 15 to 20 minutes even if it is a topic like women empowerment which needs many hours of discussion remembering my high school teacher suniti ma'am who who used to really prepares up on prissy writing well my husband was right this one time and i will need to really work on a detailed script for the podcast to manage time rather than some scribble notes a very good female uh, a very good male friend wrote to me that he was a little offended that i talk about men in such poor light while people like him go an extra mile or two to make women comfortable what more can we do is something he asked honestly i have also been lucky that many of my male friends bosses colleagues and my family members are great examples of ideal men to be with for women but i still stand by my belief that they are all an exception rather than rule and constitute a very very little percentage of male population it is like one woman falsely accusing a man of sexual harassment does not mean all cases are false and focusing on exceptions devalues the real issue and most of these good men who are not offenders are most of the times silent spectators of gender biases for example in a party a man made a lewd comment about a group of girls who were dancing none of the other male members reprimanded him some laughed along with him and some were silent and worse some walked off saying that the party was not in good taste and when this happens most women there start getting sati savitri vibes and feel guilty about their existence there and will also walk out of the party as if preserving what little is left of their respect that original offender never gets to understand his lack of sensitivity or the distasteful behavior it is the same with women who don't call out distasteful behavior of other women but choose to rather discuss about it behind their backs in normal circumstances it may be okay but when we don't call out gender bias or sexism or any ism for that matter among our day to day friends or companions even if we are not direct offenders we are going to be definitely encouraging gender bias or sexism another feedback i got was or rather another few feedback that i got was that i may have offended the folks in the organizations i have worked at for one thing i have worked in a single organization for 15 years and apart from my laziness to find another job there must have been something good going on there right so my views are not to offend any anyone or any one organization but rather hope that through these 
views at least one person will introspect on the culture that he or she is creating around workplace any workplace because this is not a matter of single organization it is true in most organizations interestingly this feedback came only from men and not women so i'm happy that the this person is giving feedback even if it is one on one and not on public forum i would say it is an achievement from my side since since the person has crossed a barrier of being in denial that these issues exist at workplace like winston churchill has said criticism in this case my criticism on an org culture may not be agreeable but it is necessary it fulfills the same function as pain in the human body it calls attention to an unhealthy state of things anyway this is a topic that needs multiple episodes and it is definitely uh, going to be co- continued where i'll call out more statistics and examples coming to the topic for this episode which has been delayed for quite some time since suddenly lots been going on around me we adopted a puppy vasu and god he is handful and joyful as well apart from that my daughter mridu was called back to college at manipal and now i have the jitters that things are going out of my hand from the point of view of health of my family members in the last few days i have realized that i would rather have my children healthy than educa- educated how the priorities have shifted after covid suddenly the picnic of four we were having for the last 8 months at home came to an end but thanks to vasu our new possum member i was preoccupied enough not to be completely heartbroken about my daughter going back to college out of town in this regard one of my friends asked me why did you in the first place send her out of town another friend had commented sometime last year when we were preparing to send my daughter to out of town university that she would in fact never send her own son out of their house alone till he was married at the same time another friend sent his 13 year old son to a boarding school and told me that it was the best decision he had made for his son mixed views right so i thought i'll mull over this in my next episode what is the right thing to do as parents do we keep our children at home for eternity or do we send them to boarding schools or should we scorn at people who do that should we keep our university going children at our homes or should we let them figure out make mistakes um, and learn how to manage on their own in a hostel or shared apartment with friends should we go for what our parents thought the best for us or should we think on what is the best for the children for their goals and aspirations to be achieved we will mull over this in the coming episode and thanks again for listening to me see you soon with the full episode bye bye